If you have pain in your knee that's just below the kneecap, then this is the video for you. We'll be going through what it is, the best exercise you can do to help sort it out, and also what are the things you can do that can help it. Firstly, what is it? So the bit you're pressing on around the soft bit below the kneecap is your patellar tendon. And if feeling pain right around that area, it'll be that which is causing your issue. One area that normally gets really painful with this is if you relax your leg and press the top of your kneecap, it'll expose more of the pole of the patella. If pressing on this and it's really painful compared to the other side, then it's a patella tendinopathy that's the issue. So what should you do about it? Well, this tendon is attached to your quad muscle, so it all comes down to managing the load going through it. And you'll need to rehab to help get it back to normal, which we will cover shortly. Shortly. When you have this tendinopathy, what happens is it changes the tolerance to loading. So the capacity of what the muscle can take stays, but tolerance lowers. If you then exceed that tolerance, you will now get pain. The hard thing with tendons is that you won't always get pain during the activity, but it might come afterwards. The problem is, if you keep exceeding tolerance, you'll go round and round in circles with this, and it can last for a really long time. I'm talking more than a year, if not getting this right. So the rehab you want to be doing is all about building this tolerance back up. And when your normal day-to-day -day activities don't exceed the tolerance, you can get back to normal with no pain. You will have to modify any activities that keep exceeding it though initially for the rehab to work and be effective. Otherwise, you'll be getting stuck in that place going around in circles. So in terms of rehab, the focus is on the quad. However, you will need to still work all the other areas of the leg to stop them getting weak while you're recovering. If you imagine you're not doing anywhere near as much activity, that'll affect the whole leg. But when working the other areas, you don't want to involve much quad. And we'll go through good exercise options for this. So let's break it down. A great one that's a double whammy for the glute and hamstring is a single leg Romanian deadlift. You can use as much weight as you can tolerate here as it shouldn't be getting too much quad. Make sure with this to try and keep the body straight so not shifting off to the side and you'll want to keep your hips level so the other side isn't rising up. Keep the back straight and lift the other leg high and when returning to the start position try not to touch the leg to the floor. You want to also get the adductor muscles working and the best for this would be the Copenhagen adductor exercise. Having your leg up on a surface while in a side plank and this can be progressed and regressed nicely. Easiest being with more of the leg on the surface and other foot down on the floor to just the foot on the surface and the other leg up with all options in between to find the right level for you. You also don't want to be forgetting your calves and you can simply work these with calf raises. Double leg, single leg, on the floor, off a step, with or without a weight. Again, whichever level is best for you, just keep them working. Now, the main ones for the quads. You want to be getting load into the tendon to aid recovery and build the tolerance back up, but ensuring you're not overloading. So how I would plan this is to pick two exercises for it. One compound exercise and one isolation exercise and measure the load going through. So how much weight are you lifting for how many reps and sets? If you're an exercise, you get higher than a three out of 10 pain or any grimacing, stop and reduce the overall load. If it's less than a three, you can feel it, but it's okay while you're doing it, then you can carry on. If doing an exercise and it's fine during, but you get pain later, and that's lingering for over a day afterwards, this is still an indication the load was too high. So you then need to reduce it next time and check the response again. If all is okay during and after, then progress the load the next time, very steadily, checking the response as you go. So choices for a compound exercise to do. Pick either between a single leg step down, where you'll have your heel raised to make it more quad dominant, and you'll adjust load here by how far forward you can get your other foot. The further you go, the more load. Have markers so you can stay consistent and measure it to allow adjustments. An alternative compound exercise you can do is squats, but there's something you need to be very mindful of if choosing this, which we'll discuss in a second. For this, also raise your heels up to make it more quad dominant again. 
pick a range you're going to and stay consistent and then gradually build that load up over the coming weeks and months, minimizing any aggravation as much as possible. The thing to be mindful of this is to make sure you're not getting a shift and favoring the non-painful side. The build-up for this will take months if it's a fairly bad tendinopathy. You might get lucky if it wasn't that bad and it'll be a few weeks, but a proper tendinopathy will take three plus months to build back up to your normal levels. So don't rush it and stay consistent. For isolation work, choose between either a leg extension, so lifting up slowly, controlled and lowering in the same fashion, the loading on this can be built up really gradually as well, which makes this a good choice. And something you want to be mindful of with all the quad exercises is to ensure movement is slow and controlled. Tendons store energy for a quick, powerful release. So sometimes the speed of movement can be what's aggravating. This work will come later in the rehab though. An alternative isolation would be sled pulls. Again, this can be built up by gradually adjusting the weight pulled and the distance gone. At the start, we also mentioned there is something else that can help with this condition. And you'll generally use this if you have to do something you know will likely irritate symptoms, such as doing a lot of walking, or you're out and about, unable to modify anything. And it's something you either can't get out of or you're really wanting to do then you can get a strap to use. This won't miraculously stop it from being set off, but will reduce the overload. It's not something you want to be wearing all the time, but it is a useful tool for when it's really needed. Watch this video next to understand more about the buildup of the quad exercises in terms of reps and sets and how to safely and effectively progress things.